Joining us right now is Lael Brainerd, a director of the National Economic Council. Good morning to you. Uh, Lael, it's nice to see you. There's a lot to talk about this morning. Uh, the CHIPS uh, piece of this is just one part of it. H how big a piece of it, uh, and, and how much do you think this is going to change the dynamic uh, with which we, we have manufacturing in this country? You know, we're seeing an incredible surge in factory construction of manufacturing facilities all over the country. And today's announcement under the Chips and Science Act of a $1.5 billion uh, grant that will uh, help to catalyze $12.5 billion in private sector investment, Malta, New York, a new fab and really important uh, chip production, the kinds of chips that go into cars uh, and led to those massive shortages uh, during the pandemic. That capacity is now moving here in the U.S., but also important for satellite and uh, space kinds of applications that are important to our national security. And of course, a big jobs winner uh, in upstate New York and also in uh, Vermont with 10,000 jobs uh, around uh, Malta, New York. Well, how long do you think it's going to take to become chip independent? And what do you think chip independent means? Yeah, so we already have, as you know, an incredible uh, downstream industry here. That means that there are a huge number of uh, designers and uh, uh, companies that use leading edge chips as well as uh, current uh, chip uh, models. And so moving uh, that leading edge production here, moving some of the chips of the type uh, that Global Foundries uh, is uniquely capable in doing will really catalyze uh, the whole ecosystem. We've also got uh, investments uh, in advanced packaging, uh, in innovation. As you know, we just announced a big innovation uh, funding package uh, two weeks ago. So the whole ecosystem really is getting an enormous boost from chips and science. Uh, Lel, I want to read you a headline from Politico, and this becomes a political problem potentially for the president, uh, depending on uh, how, how you think about Michigan as a swing state. Uh, the headline, Biden has a high tech problem in Michigan. Uh, Biden sold a tax break by pumping up a Michigan microchip uh, supplier, in this case the company was called Hemlock, uh, then left the company out in the cold. So here you are promoting uh, what's going to happen uh, in, in New York and Vermont, but this other company, uh, which is in Michigan, a state that I imagine you care deeply about uh, when it comes to the election, has a big, big problem. What do you, what do you say to that? You know, we, uh, this is the Global Foundries announcement that the White House and uh, Commerce Department, Leader Schumer, have all been working on today uh, is uh, the largest announcement, but it is one of many announcements. It's the largest announcement so far, but I expect to see a lot more activity uh, in uh, chips and science uh, going forward. Uh, so I think, you know, you're going to see a lot of excitement all around the country right. uh, with but some of our it, upcoming announcements. What about in Michigan and, and this company, Hemlock, specifically? Uh, this was a company that was cited in a speech uh, mm -hmm. that the president gave uh, from the White House uh, South Lawn at one point. And, yeah, um, as I said, these announcements are ongoing. Uh, so I anticipate that we will see uh, additional announcements. And, and uh, so I'd stay tuned for that. But I think... What we're seeing under Chips and Science is uh, announcements that are uh, affecting uh, the workforce and innovation uh, and construction all over the country. So I, I think this is an ongoing uh, program, so stay tuned. Well, uh, in terms of the economic forecast, uh, there was a sense almost, and, and maybe it was too, too magical, a sense that inflation really was coming down at this rapid, rapid rate, and then recently it feels like that is not what is happening. What do you think is happening? Yeah, I would say that um, you have to look at the broader data picture, and if you look at uh, the PCE measure of inflation, which is what the uh, Federal Reserve really tracks, uh, that's been down in the 2% range uh, over the last six months, core and headline. So I think it's really important always to step back from an individual data point and look at the data picture. The data picture is strong growth very strong employment, but inflation uh, 
trending down, coming down to uh, its pre-pandemic benchmark. So the broader picture, I think, is encouraging. But I'll say one thing, uh, which is we got a lot of work still to do. Some prices are still too high. Let me ask you about consolidation. There was a big headline this morning, uh, Capital One uh, to, be, to merge with Discover Financial. Uh, you, this administration, the Biden administration, has been uh, particularly vocal, if not going to the courts, to block a number of major deals. This would be the largest uh, deal in the financial space in a long time. Uh, what are your initial thoughts? So I can't speak to any particular um, uh, cases, but what I will say is the president is very committed to restoring competition across the uh, landscape in the United States. Uh, for too long, we saw a lot of consolidation, uh, which did not have benefits, but rather came at some cost. And so we've really seen a reinvigoration of the commitment to competition, which levels the playing field for small businesses. Could, could you see a moment where a deal creates more competition, which is to say I could make a uh, maybe counterintuitive argument that the consolidation between a Capital One and Discover actually creates a genuine competitor insofar as it was not before to Visa and MasterCard, for example? You know, I can't, again, I don't want to speak to this particular case, uh, but there are sometimes uh, cases where that can indeed happen. Uh, you know, what I would say is that uh, we believe that it's really important to have a diversity of different business models and sizes across the financial services landscape uh, and uh, traditionally uh, have wanted to make sure that uh, that playing field is, is level, make sure that smaller financial institutions also have a real shot.